Welcome to a bunker guide for beginners, mediocre players and also pro players. Ever since these abandoned bunkers were introduced to scum, they have been through a lot of changes and therefore it's been hard to find the right time to do these bunker guides. But I feel comfortable now that the bunkers will not have a radical change that will make this guide outdated anytime soon. So with that out the way, every time I do these bunkers on stream or in videos, I always get comments on how I know when to move, when to stop, what is this humming sound I'm always talking about. Well, today I will answer all the questions. So let's begin. So with me I have the flamethrower, an improvised bow, the M16 with a bayonet and the Bushman. These are all the most common weapons to bring into the bunker and therefore I'm going to show you all of them in action. My favorite weapon is the flamethrower. It's cheap and easy to make and it also makes no sound while spitting flames. I also brought a keycard with me just because this bunker isn't an open bunker. So I'm just going to open the bunker with the keycard and I'm going to drop the keycard. Now as soon as you enter the bunker you will hear this humming sound that I've been talking about and I want you to really pay attention to it. My character does not have any good skills for these bunkers and this is to show you that you can do these bunkers no problem without any stealth skill, archery skill or melee skill. I don't even have medical skill. But I would recommend you have at least medium medical skill doing these bunkers. Because things can always go wrong. Opening doors makes a lot of noises, so when I open one, I wait for the humming to go away until I make any more noises. I need to find a keycard to open the fuse room, and I find it in the office or in dead zombies most of the time. Now, this humming you hear starts whenever you or somebody else makes any noises in the bunker. This could be from looting, dropping items, moving, cutting stuff, or fighting, you name it. Everything you do makes noises in the bunker. Even swapping weapons makes noises. The humming has two stages with two peaks. The first peak is your first warning that you are making too much noise. And the second peak is your last warning. When I say peak, I'm talking about the highest pitch of the humming. You have to stop making noise before it reaches the second peak. But keep in mind, Different actions makes different amounts of noises. Dropping a big toolbox, for example, will make a lot of noises and therefore reach the second peak instantly. So you can't make any more noises until the humming is stopped. This also goes for if you bring a friend into the bunker. If you and your friend are searching stuff at the same time rapidly, the vents will start shaking even before the humming has reached the second peak. Air has started to jump to make noises and therefore the humming reached its second peak. The vent started shaking and the racer dropped. Now you see me instantly kill this racer. And that's because I shot it in the head of the back of the racer. Behind the racer there is a little baby controlling the racer. And if you shoot the baby the racer instantly dies. This is a depository and also a combination door. This is one out of three doors that makes no noises when you open them. The second door that makes no noises is the big gates you open and the third are all the gates that require electricity to open them. The combination lock works like this. There are three grayed out numbers that means there is six possible combinations for this door. The numbers for this door was two, six and seven. That means the six possible combinations are two, six, seven, two, seven, six, 
six two seven six seven two seven two six and lastly seven six two you just have to try each i always start with the lowest number there is no good reason for why to start with the lowest number it's just my personal preference i just do it this way so if i fail three combinations which were two six seven two seven six and then six two seven if i have to run away and hide and then come back and try again i know that i just did these numbers so the next one after three combinations would be six two seven and then so on up to seven Now here you can see the flamethrower in action and also you see why the flamethrower is my favorite. The flamethrower makes no noises so I can stand on distance firing it without making any noises. Using doors to protect yourself from racers is a very good tactic because they cannot open any doors. Only puppets can open doors. So you can use your knife, your bow, your flamethrower, or your bind to kill the racers through the doors. As you can tell, cutting rags makes also a lot of noises. As you can see, the flamethrower is getting low on fuel. And this is why I brought a big soda bottle filled with fuel. Here you can hear the two peaks of the humming. The first one goes up to its loud point, then goes a little bit down, and then the second one starts to go up, and you have to stop before the second one reaches its top, or the vents will start shaking and racers might drop.
As you can see, the racer got me and I got a C3 injury. But don't panic, I still have 50 HP. I still have time to look around for clothing to cut or cut my own. But I will take my time to cut the clothing so no more racers will drop. After healing, it's time to open the door, but the door has no power, so I have to manually open it. This is the way to open the door without attracting any racers or Mr. Brenner. Now there's two ways to open the doors. The first one is to click manually open and stop the action before he starts twisting the wheel. For each time you do this, it stacks on percentage to the full opening, and the speed of this percentage goes faster for each time. The second way to do it is to let him twist the wheels two times and before he hits the third twist you stop the action and then you wait for the humming to go away before you start the next action. We have opened a lot of doors now, but let's see what happens when I fail a combination. When you fail a combination, an alarm will set off and a racer will drop. There's also a lot of humming involved because a lot of noises is being made. And as well as this, Burner will make his way up to the door. The doors you hear opening is Mr. Brenner making his way up here. But since I'm in the first floor and so far away from Mr. Brenner, I even have time to fail another combination before he gets up here. Burner is left, I can continue going through the bunker. This is the only yellow gate that does not make any noises when you open it. So this gate you can open as much as you want, but this is the only gate.
Now, as you can see, again, I've been hit by the racers and I'm hurt. I have two C2 injuries and I need to find something to cut. But again, don't rush cutting anything. I still have 80 HP and I have good time to walk around and look for clothing. A good place to look for clothing is the medical areas. Now searching puppets in itself doesn't make a lot of noises, but when you search them and then the items drop on the ground, that can make a lot of noises dependent on how much stuff that puppets have on them. Now here is a couple of hiding spots where you can hide from racers and zombies, but keep in mind, after the devs cease this video, they might change these spots in the future. So use them while you can.
You can also hide there from Brenner, but be careful. He can still reach you with the flamethrower if he gets too close. Now going back to the fuse room, from here I will show you where to go to upgrade your BCU module. After upgrading, you either have to wait 6 hours for it to reset, or you have to wait for server reset to upgrade it again. If you have one filled up, you can do it manually, but it is a 12% chance of successful upgrade. So I would highly suggest you go to the trader if you want to upgrade your intelligence.
Now, doing the armory, I keep the main door open. So, in case I fail, I can run out and I'm not trapped inside there with Brenner. After I fail an attempt, I run away from Brenner, hide and wait for him to go back to sleep before I make another try.
This is how the main depositories looks like. There's another one on the opposite side where we went down to Brenner the first time. Very good looting spots. As you can see, I forgot to turn off the fuse when I went down and there is no more power in the first floor. But as I showed before, that's not an issue. We can do the manual opening silent. If you really want to get out, you can also do it very loud without a problem. Bunker tour is now over and I hope it was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching, thank you for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.